Welcome to Understanding FabGuard FDC. What is it and what does it do? I'm Courtney Fowler, FDC engineer here at Inficon. Fault detection and classification, or FDC, is a subset of advanced process control that concerns itself with process monitoring. Fault detection, determine whether a fault has occurred. Fault identification, Identify the process variables most relevant to diagnosing the fault. Fault classification, determine the cause of the out-of-control condition. And finally, process recovery, removing the effect of the fault from the process tool. This process is repeated many times throughout a shift where the fault detection step could be performed by the equipment itself, a qualification, or inline electrical testing. Let me give you an example of process monitoring in your factory using an RTP tool. We've run a test wafer at RTP anneal and the sheet resistance is high as determined by our SPC chart. This usually happens when the dopant isn't sufficiently activated and suspect that the temperature was low. Equipment maintenance discovers more than the allowable number of burned out lamps. The lamps are replaced and the RTP tool is qualified and returned to production. When thinking about this from an FDC perspective, the RTP sheet resistance qualification is typically providing shift-by-shift -shift fault detection. What happens if there's a fault right after the qualification is performed? Then 12 hours of processed wafers are at risk for scrap before the problem can be detected at the next qualification. What are some ways we can mitigate this risk? We can increase the frequency of qualification, i.e. perform the qualification every six hours instead of 12. This is expensive. It takes time and money to qualify the tool, not to mention the loss of productivity during the qual. Practically speaking, we need to augment the qualification data with information that is available on a lot-to-lot, wafer-to-wafer, or in some cases a real-time basis to actively lower our risk of scrap due to fault. In general, this includes data that's collected from the tool, as well as any advanced sensors attached to that tool, and that's where FabGuard comes in. In this example, FabGuard uses state and process information to detect faults and mitigate the risk of scrap in the time between standard tool qualifications. I like to think of FabGuard as a factory signals intelligence tool. Signals go in, intelligence and control come out, if you think of FabGuard in this way, then you'll quickly see the amazing range of questions that can be answered using the collection and analysis tools that FabGuard provides. To start, what kinds of signals can FabGuard collect? Basically, if your signal has any kind of structure and travels on a wire, FabGuard can probably collect it. Here are a few examples by category. This is only a sample of the signal types that FabGuard can collect. A full list of sensors, gauges, boards, and protocols that are currently available in FabGuard can be found in the software help. Now that we've got an idea of what kinds of signals that FabGuard can collect, let's look at what FabGuard can provide as factory intelligence. When I think of factory intelligence, I'm really just thinking of the answer to a specific question. So what kinds of questions can we answer using signals collected in the factory? Is there a leak in the chamber? Were there any arcs during the process? Was the process interrupted? How long did it take to transition between process recipes? How many wafers did each tool process last week? What recipes were run on each tool last week and which ones were used the most? Is the robot properly aligned? What was the most frequent tool alarm yesterday? Are my SPC limits appropriately set? How close are my tools to a PM? Let's take a look at the physical components of FabGuard that we need to turn signals into intelligence. Here we have a tool with multiple advanced sensors and support equipment. We need a component that will automatically collect, unify, and analyze the various data streams. This component is called the FabGuard Integrated Process Monitor, or FabGuard IPM for short. The FabGuard IPM is the workhorse of the FabGuard system, providing all of the acquisition, analysis, and interdiction support at the tool level. All tool data 
Advanced sensor data, support equipment data, and third-party sensor engaged data is collected and processed by the IPM. Additionally, the IPM is the sensor controller for all Inficon Advanced sensors. When connected to the tool, the IPM necessarily sits between factory automation and the tool. A sex multiplexer application is provided to route messages between the factory host and the tool. For standalone installations, the IPM is all that is required to provide sensor control and real-time FDC. What happens if you want to monitor and manage all of the tools in your area using multiple IPMs? We can provide additional enterprise-level components to manage your fleet of IPMs and extend the analysis capabilities of FabGuard. To begin, we would like to unify the management of IPMs and provide web services for the remote viewing of the IPM system. These functions are provided by FabGuard Executive, a server-based program that can manage up to 100 individual IPMs. Next, we would like an easy way to store results, as well as search for and view data based on parameters such as tool, chamber, date, time, tool recipe, etc. The FabGuard database allows users to quickly find the data and results they need by performing simple SQL queries instead of hunting through folders of data. Raw data collected by the IPM, data collection configurations, and system log files can be stored locally on the IPM PC or stored in a centrally managed network storage location for ease of management and backup. Finally, we need an interface to access the IPMs and data from our desks. The FabGuard Client Program allows web-based access to individual IPMs through FabGuard Executive and to the database for data retrieval and visualization. Remote configuration of most IPM components can be performed through the FabGuard Client. Remember at the beginning, I said that the IPM provides all of the acquisition, analysis, and interdiction support at the tool level. The FabGuard Acquisition subsystem can collect the following data. Process data, or raw data during the equipment process recipe. This data collection is event-driven and starts and stops depending on the state of the tool. Event-driven systems such as FabGuard allow for dynamic configuration of parameters. For example, an RGA sensor can be configured to detect leaks when nitrogen is used as a process gas, but not when oxygen is used, which would damage the sensor. Equipment performance indicators, which are used to continuously monitor variables and events not associated with processing. These types of data collection can accumulate time, counts, and quantities. For example, gas flows can be accumulated to give total gas used in process, or interruptions to the process can be counted to give an indicator of equipment health. Maintenance indicators are used to continuously monitor variables and events associated with maintenance. Like EPIs, they can accumulate time, counts, and quantities. For example, implant source hours and RF hours are both good maintenance indicators that can be monitored. FabGuard can also acquire and analyze alarms and events that happen on the equipment. The alarms can be analyzed using a Pareto report. For wafer processing, FabGuard can collect any context or logistical information that is available, such as lot ID, slot ID, substrate ID, process job, recipe, etc. From a knowledge perspective, you can go from knowing nothing to knowing everything about a process. When you know nothing about the internal workings of the process, statistical analyses are available. These include both unsupervised learning, where you do not know if the wafer was good or bad at the end of a process, and supervised learning, where you do know if a wafer is good or bad. Moving forward along the continuum, most process knowledge can be captured by our expert system. There are certain conditions that are known to cause process issues and we need a way to put the rules in place for these conditions. Think of expert system as a way to automate failure mode and effect analysis entries. For example, a wafer will be damaged by charging if there are too many interruptions during an implant process. Expert system rules can be put in place to notify the engineer and or perform an action on the equipment. At the end, we have the case where we know everything about the process, meaning the direct physics. FabGuard can be implemented here also using expert system rules and advanced modeling techniques. For example, 
Implant Analyzer Magnet Health can be accurately modeled using direct physics to indicate whether the calibration has shifted, resulting in the wrong species being implanted into product. From a time perspective, FabGuard can operate in real time. In other words, analyses can be applied to each new data point as it's collected. Process endpoint or critical faults are generally performed using real-time analyses. FabGuard can also operate on a run-by-run -run or wafer-by-wafer -wafer basis. Typical SPC reports and certain models are applied to summarized run-by-run -run data. Meta-analyses of fab data can also be scheduled to run on a periodic basis, such as an SPC health check, CP, CPKs, a Pareto of tool alarms in an area, or a list of current RF hours for each tool in a group for PM planning. As you saw in the previous slide, FabGuard performs analyses at multiple levels and time scales in order to detect as many different types of faults as possible. Just like we want to collect the right data at the right time, we also want to perform the right analysis at the right time. The first level of analysis is used to condition, frame, or summarize raw data streams. Once the data has been conditioned, we can send it to level two analyses, which are FabGuard's real-time expert system or real-time SPC reporting. Summarized data, the min, max, standard deviation, range, etc., are referred to as figures of merit or FOMs in FabGuard. Both conditioned time series data and summarized data can be sent to level three analyses, which are executed run by run. The level three models can be chained together, meaning the output of one model can be used as the input to another model. At level four, only figures of merit are used for SPC reports. Finally, metrics are calculated from FOMs that are used at level five for summary reporting and performance tracking. Let's look at examples of some of these analysis levels. In the level one analyses, Data conditioning is used to modify the raw data to create useful signals. Essentially, we want to extract key information using advanced math, filters, and logic. FabGuard contains an interface for making virtual sensors, which we call signal bins. Inside of the signal bin interface, we can divide, multiply, or otherwise combine multiple data streams. We have time range functions, sum, integral, slope, correlation coefficient. We have event functions increasing, decreasing, crossing through a window or change. We have logic functions. We have if then, if then else, and, or, or not. We also have complex functions, Butterworth filter, EWMA, moving average, moving delta, lead, lag, etc. In this example, the magnet drives of a plasma etch system are framed by DC bias to analyze a specific portion of the process. In the level two analyses, data is being analyzed as it is acquired in real time. Using the expert system, we can use Boolean logic, time constraints, sequential gating, and persistence to determine fault. Let's skip level three analyses for now and look at the level four SPC capabilities. FabGuard implements and extends traditional SPC to include dynamic target. In this example, the standard SPC limits are insufficient to determine fault in data that is linearly related. Some variables, such as this one shown here, are expected to change within a PM cycle. FabGuard can use dynamic target to shape the SPC limits to the data and provide tighter control. Here we come back to the level three analysis, models. Often, SPC is not enough. We need more sophisticated techniques to determine fault. FabGuard implements the following model types to classify faults and predict metrology values. Principal components analysis, time series envelope, Fisher discriminant analysis, support vector machines, stepwise regression, partial least squares regression, and root cause investigation. Using a PCA model, we can drill down to variable contributions for out-of-control data to determine what part of the tool contributed to the fault condition. Additionally, we can create a metrology model that will predict the measurement based on process data and then compare the prediction to the actual value. FabGuard implements another feature that can significantly decrease the management of your FDC system. Creating one report for each tool chamber recipe combination is impractical for most applications. 
FabGuard allows a report to be created for multiple tool chamber recipe combinations, thereby consolidating many reports into a single report with independent execution. After the data has been processed and appropriate analyses applied, we need to have a way of getting the results back out to the factory. FabGuard can send data and results to the factory, it can notify engineers when a fault has occurred, and it can send process halt messages back to the equipment. Using the data that FabGuard has collected and processed, we can extract information using a variety of data displays, including raw time series data, Pareto plots, and wafer tracking plots. In general, FabGuard can display maintenance, tool alarm, summary reports, tool and chamber, process, and wafer information. FabGuard also contains sophisticated drill down capability so that you can explore the data from different points of view regardless of the plot that is being displayed. In this example, you can begin by looking at summarized data in an SPC report and then drill down to the time series data of multiple or single wafers using a right-click menu. That's all I have for now. Thank you for joining me in this discussion on understanding FabGuard FTC. Additional information can be found in FabGuard Software Help.